Hello everybody and welcome back to another live stream with me, Gisela Kay. This is Grizzly True Crime and today's case takes us to Washington State. Okay, so west side of the USA. I will actually start this episode off by just quickly showing you the map just so that we can just see the general area. Here's Tacoma, Washington and the King County adult detention center where this man is now being held. We're going to get into it. And so it's around here. Okay. This Auburn, Washington area. So if I just zoom out wherever you are in the world, now you can see where it is. Okay. All the way on that side of the USA. You see, <laughs> we've spent a lot of time in Florida <laughs> on many cases. Okay. But <laughs> um, this is all the way over here. So welcome everyone. Uh, we're going to be looking at a presentation and then I'm going to be reading two very informative articles to just remind us of everything we just saw on the presentation. If you're anything like me, sometimes if there's, you know, I'm reading all sorts of things. I don't have the documents yet working on it. Okay. For this case, but I'm like reading all sorts of things. I need it chronologically. I need pictures. I need it chronologically. So that's what I bring to you first. Okay. Welcome to all my moderators. Thank you so much for everything you do. And so sorry for the late notice. My bad. And uh, welcome to all my patrons. I hope that you got the video that I uploaded for you today, the YouTube members replay. Welcome to all my members as well. Check the members only stream if you missed it. It's on the members um, only playlist and it's also on the community tab if you struggle to find it. And let's let's have a look at this case, uh, which sure. This is a bad, bad man, allegedly. <laughs> He's allegedly a very bad man. I mean, it started off with one murder charge in 2021. And he's just been charged with three other murders. Took a while for them to do all the DNA tests and everything, but he's now officially an alleged serial killer. So his trial was supposed to start soon-ish. I'm not sure of the exact date for that one murder charge, but now with the three charges added, eh, it might take a little while still. Okay. Uh, Michelle Redfield says, I live in WA where the apples or hops are. Oh, okay. So this guy is Richard Bradley Jr. He's 40 years old now. Um, and he was married and living in a recreational home in Renton with his wife. They actually said he's from the Kent area, Washington state. Um, but he was living in this recreational home in Renton with his wife at the time when him and her were arrested. She was arrested for an arson charge, which we'll get into as well, I think. There's a chance you might be charged with other things when you hear more information, okay? Um, so the home contained, and good luck, because YouTube's going to be like, yeah, we're not going to show this video to anyone after this lady says all these words. <laughs> it's just how it goes on YouTube, okay? So please like and share the video so that at least more people can see it. Um, so the home contained three pounds of uh, meth, a pound of heroin, and 1,000 Percocet pills when he was arrested, as well as a shotgun and a handgun. He also has pending criminal cases from 2018, 2019, and 2020, which include, there's many, you know, if you look at his, like, just look up his name on the court docket, <laughs> there's a lot of charges, a lot. So two counts of unlawful possession of a firearm, arson, vehicular assault, second degree robbery, and now four first degree murder charges. Whoa, that's a lot. Um, thank you, Amanda. So. He was arrested on May 21st of 2021. So it's two and a half years that he's been sitting in jail. And in those two and a half years, investigators have been working hard to identify the bodies that they found. And they've managed to do so. So now he's got four murder charges. Now, so he's just been charged with the three additional murders. He was initially charged with one. He pleaded not guilty on December uh, 14th of 2023, which was probably on what, Thursday? Thursday or Friday. And so he's being held without bail. Previously, he had a bail amount of just over $3 million. But now he's being held without bail at the King County Jail in Washington State. And he has a defense attorney called Peter Geisness. So that's what we know about him. That's a mugshot of him. Once you know all the information, he, he looks very scary. <laughs> He's a very scary guy. Okay. So let's have a look. This is where I wanted to bring you the chronological 
uh, information because there's four victims. So, you know, and they mention all over the place, everywhere I read, so I'm like, no, 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 let's just start with who, who was victim one. They found the body of victim number four first and three other bodies after that. So he was actually charged first with the last victim's murder. But chronologically, based on what we know, and I think there might be more, important to call the police if you know anything or saw anything, the first victim was Emilio Maturin. 36-year-old Emilio was last seen on July 19th of 2019. And there's missing persons flyers, and there's, he's listed on the Charlie Project. He's, there were lots of missing persons um, flyers information shared about this case when I actually looked up his name. I'm like, shame, his family was looking for him for a while, right? So he was last seen July 19th of 2019. He was known to carry cash and drugs with him. Now, that's important. The reason I'm telling you that is because all four victims, they say, you know, they just got a lot of cash or they just were known to carry cash and drugs or they were, you know, so that would be the serial, the alleged serial killer's motive seems to be financial. <laughs> okay, he's like targeting people who are excited about recently winning new money or having money or buying a new car or something. So he locks onto them and targets them. So he was known to carry cash and drugs with him. His girlfriend reports him missing on August 2nd, 2019. She overheard him saying that Richard needed help digging up some buried gold in Auburn. So the way that they talk about these victims and Richard, who's the alleged serial killer, it sounds like they knew him. You know, like they they were acquainted somewhere. I don't know if it's from drug dealing or something to do with that, if that's the connection or just the area or if they were friends. I'm not too sure about that yet. The more that we learn, the more I will tell you. We're just starting the conversation about this case today. Joe Jackalone is in chat. You say, hello, Grizzly Nation. <laughs> so nice to see you, Joe Jackalone. You guys, go subscribe over there because we love to do Grizzly raids over there. I'm often in chat over there or lurking or a replay watcher. Love Joe's channel, so go check that out. Okay, so... Um, so just no note these, okay, the things that I'm saying that they, okay, drugs, cash, cars, okay, and then they target to this guy. Did they know him? Did they know of him? I'm not too sure how that all came about, but um, this girlfriend overheard Emilio saying that Richard needed help digging up some buried gold in Auburn, or that this guy that I'm meeting up with, yeah, he's going to need my help digging up buried gold. With all four victims, he told them, he needs their help. He lured them to an area, like a wilderness area, and said, we're going to go there and dig up some gold. And then once they were there, he murdered them. So Emilio was initially skeptical, but decided to go anyway. Now, I put that in all caps because it's very important to trust your gut. Your gut instinct will usually tell you wait a minute, something's up with this, and then maybe you override it with what one might say is logic or just like, Psh, I'm just overreacting, whatever. No, no, listen to your gut because his gut initially told him, you know, I don't know about this, man. And then he went anyway. So he had recently bought a white BMW and left with Richard. See why I say that? I think they knew each other. So he left with Richard. The girlfriend's like, okay, bye. And then she never saw him again. Um, and he was carrying with him, the girlfriend said, $15,000 in cash, a pound of heroin and some meth. That's what he left with, with Richard, which are the things that this alleged serial killer wants. That's what it seems like, okay? Now, his girlfriend actually, she was really worried. Um, I know it says she reported him missing two weeks later, but maybe she thought, I don't know, maybe they went somewhere. We don't know how new the relationship was or anything like that. So please don't go judging her. The thing is, she was really worried, and so she actually tracked his phone, it was probably with that Find My Phone type app, um, to a game farm park. And then she went, she actually drove there and went to look for him, but she got scared and then left. Okay, so 24 hours after the men had left, police located an unregistered BMW parked on the side of the road, very close to where the bodies were found. So I'm just piecing that together for you. They saw this unregistered BMW and they waited there for the driver to return, you know, probably to be like, wait, why, when are you going to register your car? When a man returned, it was Richard, not Emilio, just Richard returned and he made a run for it. 
and so he was caught and arrested. A police chase ensued, he was caught and arrested. Later, they found the bodies near there, and um, three ribs were found near victim four's body, and DNA tests later confirmed that they belonged to Emilio. So just remember, this is layer one of this uh, case, the overview that I'm giving you chronologically, victim one, then two and three, then four. Then I'm going to read you the articles, and then it'll help you understand the articles so much better. Okay. Blue Bear Art says, so she did listen to her instincts. Yeah. Joe, Jack alone says, never a good idea. Right? I also want to tell you guys, one of the Grizzlies, um, who's a patron, and thank you so much for being a patron, I keep all my sources anonymous, actually shared with me that uh, after watching the serial predator case that we spoke about yesterday, you know, with the social media and all the tips and things that I was reading out, things, she said it really helped her because she connected with someone on a dating app, but there was something that she just didn't trust about what he was saying, and he was bragging about being, you know, in, in the financial department, and she's also in that type of industry. And so she asked him a question like, so, um, let me just get the word in quickly. She said, wait for it. I recently got back into the dating game and started chatting with a guy for about two days. You said to be aware if they seem too good to be true, they probably are. I started asking questions to feel out the situation. I work in financial supervision and caught him in a flat out lie. When I asked if they took the Series 7 licensing exam, he said yes, yet there was no record of this person existing with FINRA, right? Anyone can use a broker check to look up a person's registration. Trust your gut. <laughs> so all those lessons, I really hope that encourages a lot of Grizzlies. If you are on any, you know, social media apps or dating apps, just be careful. Trust your gut. Ask questions. If you want to see more of those tips, uh, look at the episode from yesterday, okay? The serial predator one. Anyway, so same here. I just thought of that because of Emilio being initially skeptical. And then also, you know, the girlfriend being like, oh, I don't know, man. Don't know what happened. Where did they go? And then she tracked his phone and she went there. But she thought, oh, no, this is something scared her about it. And she left, which, yes, she trusted her gut. Yes, indeed. Okay, so that would be victim number one, which we, we've got some pictures for because of um, the amount of missing persons posts that were made at the time that he was missing. For victim two and three, I actually couldn't find any pictures of them. Um, they are Michael Guman. Goman? I don't know how you guys say it. I would say Human. Like Human, because, you know, I'm in the Netherlands and I'm South African. But Michael Guman, Goman, 59 years old, and son, Vance Lakey, 31. Okay, so we're going to get into this now. Joe Jackalone says, thanks, G and Grizzly Nation, for all your support. <laughs> Thank you so much for your support. Okay, and everything that you share with us. We learned so much. If you guys haven't seen Joe Jackalone's community tab, go check it out because there's quizzes on there and I take them and I learn a lot. I actually often get the answer wrong. <laughs> I'm not yet an A student. Okay, so father and son were living in a tent. Okay, at the time they were living in a tent and then Michael received a large inheritance. He bought a $3,500 Dodge Durango cash. And then the two of them were living in this Dodge at the time they went missing. Michael uh, Goman died from a gunshot wound to the head. His body was discovered on April 21st of 2021 off an unmaintained county road in Auburn. His son, Vance, died uh, from multiple gunshot wounds to the head and his body was discovered a week later, April 28th of 2021. Richard, the alleged serial killer, and his wife drove their Dodge Durango around. <sighs> so, you know how people go so hard on Rex Human's wife, Asa? Whoa, well, this wife, this one, I'm like, ooh, this wife, I wonder, like, <laughs> he's showing up with all these cars. She's driving around with him in it. I don't know if she's going to be charged with anything else or if she knew or I don't know what's going on here. But anyway, him and his wife were driving around in the Dodge Durango. They also... They drove around in all the victims' cars after the victims had died. So they drove around in the Dodge Durango, and he also paid a man. Then they ditched it. He paid a man $1,000, which he got an arson charge for, to torch this Dodge Durango. And his wife was the one to give this man a can of gas and say, yeah, torch it. The guy didn't torch it. In fact, uh, later he spoke to the police about it, and the car was still there. And the specific instruction that the alleged serial killer gave him was, 
especially the front seats. Like, burn the crap out of that. So, <laughs> Bug Dagger says, so crazy. Yes, and to everyone celebrating the Grizzly anniversary, <laughs> it's like a milestone, right? Um, grizzly anniversary today. Um, thank you so much for all your support. So that's victim two and three. All right. Now let's look at victim four. That was the first body they found, and it was. It kind of reminds me a little bit of um, the Gilgo Beach case because they were they found you know Brandy Blake's car, and then. They spoke to a homeless man nearby and then things just unfolded and they were looking for her body. They found her body and then suddenly discovered three others. It just took a while to identify the three others. So victim number four, Brandy Blake, 44 years old. So Brandy was a drug dealer and had recently won $20,000 at a casino. So you can see there's drug links and money links with all victims that doesn't in case anyone doesn't know, especially at Grizzly True Crime, it doesn't mean that one can victim blame or shame or anything like that. That's the connection, though. That's how this alleged serial killer got in touch with him. That's where I feel like the boundary, the boundaries get a bit blurred and where he, ooh, he's got motive, right? Okay, so uh, she was a drug dealer carried. She recently won $20,000 at a casino and she was known to carry around large, large amounts of cash, just like Emilio as well. She was last seen on video at a Walgreens, not a Walmart, you guys. Okay, Walgreens with Richard, the alleged serial killer. So again, it's like she knew him, right? She met up with him at this Walgreens. At around 9 p.m., she was seen on video leaving that Walgreens on May 5th of 2021. He was then seen returning without her. He then rented a hotel room close by and was wearing the same clothes as he left in. And police later actually were able to test that those, those clothes and they found blood on them. Sure. Okay, so we're going to get more into that when we read the articles. But yeah, that's pretty hectic. So he lured her to an Auburn park on May 5th, 2021 by telling her that they would be digging up a stash of stolen gold and he wanted her to help him sell it. <laughs> Thanks, Caroline. <laughs> and so she was murdered, but this one was different. Blunt force trauma, the others he shot, which is interesting, blunt force trauma and buried in a shallow grave. Her family reported her missing on May 26th of 2021. After they couldn't get a hold of her, they tried to call her multiple times and she'd stopped posting on social media altogether. Richard and his wife, drove her black Ford Mustang after her death. Same pattern. Her Mustang was then found abandoned on May 13th of 2021 in Tacoma, Washington. So each time he lured his victims by saying, I need you to come with me and help me dig up some gold. Okay. And then he probably said, we're going to share it. I need you to help me sell it. And you're going to get whatever cut it is. When they went there, he would murder them and then take all their stuff. So that's why I'm saying I think the motive is quite clearly financial. I think that's what he's after. So instead of, um, we don't want him to rob people. I'm just saying instead of just robbing people, no, now he's an alleged serial killer. Like, sure, this guy, oh my goodness. Okay, so now let's just uh, see the last slide here. Canines were actually brought in to that area um, where she was, where her car was found, right? And they searched this game park's wilderness area in Auburn. A man at the park, apparently he was a homeless man at the park, said he'd seen someone there a few nights earlier with a backpack and a shovel. <laughs> what? And so that guy, he said, he saw this man with a backpack and a shovel and the guy was shouting for help and saying he needed directions and everything. And so this guy actually took detectives to an area south of the White River to show him where this man was asking for help. They found Brandy's body face down in a shallow grave right there where they looked. They said it wasn't a well dug grave or anything. It was, they could obviously see the soil was disturbed. Shame. They found Brandy's body face down in a shallow grave there. There was also a key card, a pickaxe and a shovel found in a second hole near the grave. And interestingly, they did mention throughout articles that I've read now that with um, this victim number three, father and son, two and three, right? There was also items that were buried, but they didn't want to say what. Very close to their body. So, so these must be some of the items. A key card, pickaxe, a shovel, and a second hole near the grave. 
Three unrelated rib bones were discovered near the area where Blake's body was found in 2021. Investigators were able to use DNA forensics to match the ribs to Maturin, that's victim number one, who had been missing since July of 2019. Reported missing in August. He was, this guy, Richard, a POI, person of interest at the time of Brandy's murder, based on information that she had given her friend about where she was going, and of course, the Walgreens video. He was arrested and charged with one count of first-degree murder, and now he's just been whacked with three more murder charges because now they've done the investigations, identified and interviewed people and everything, right? Identified the remains. So, that's what we have. Okay. <laughs> Rose says, why would you go with a stranger? Well, we don't know if he was a stranger or a friend, you know what I mean? Uh, just to find gold because he said so. I think that he targeted people who needed money. They'd recently gotten excited because they just won some money or just got an inheritance or something. So maybe they felt like they were lucky and on a roll or something. And yeah, he, this guy took everything they had. So he was after what they just got. You know, if they just won money from a casino or they just got an inheritance, he's like, I'm going to take that. <laughs> yeah. Kate says, so Walgreen, not Walmart this time. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Now I can read you the articles and it should make more sense. Okay. I really hope so. So this is the alleged serial killer, Washington state, the Auburn area. Okay. And we've got four victims that we know of. Emilio, Maturin. I'm so sorry to all the family and friends of these victims. This must be horrifying to find out. Victim one, Emilio Maturin. Victim two, Michael Goman, 59, and son, Vance Lakey, 31. And then victim four, Brandy Blake, 44 years old. All right. So now let us have a look at this. There we go. I will start with this one and then we'll read the next article. There's two articles I want to read you today. Okay. Yes, and Nancy says, didn't you just talk to us about this? Trust your instincts. Yes, indeed I did. And so please do trust your instincts, you guys. Your gut instinct is telling you things for a reason. <laughs> I've hated it in life. In my life, man, if I've ignored my gut instinct, afterwards I'm always like, you should have listened to your gut instinct. Whatever it is, you know, I'm like, oh man, <laughs> that little voice in your head. It's not too paranoid, okay? It's telling you things. All right, so yeah, <laughs> Heather sends, ah, the Seattle Times. Yes, indeed, Seattle Times. Sarah Jean Green wrote two good articles about this case. So let's have a look. A former kid man who's been jailed for the past two and a half years while awaiting trial on murder, arson, and gun charges was charged this month with three additional counts of murder accused of killing a father and son in Auburn in 2021 and killing another man in 2019 who was identified from DNA extracted from his rib bones. So now we know that's Michael Goman and his son and also Emilio Maturin. All right. Richard Bradley Jr. His middle name is Walter, by the way. So if you guys come across, I don't know, anything um, busy looking for documents, you know, the probable cause affidavits and all of that, it's Richard Walter Bradley Jr., 40 years old now. Okay. Ooh, Heather says, I never went against my gut. That's great. That's good. Joe Jackalone says, yes, it does. It will keep you alive. Yes. So they said, Richard Walter Bradley Jr. was charged in May of 2021 with premeditated first degree murder for allegedly luring 44 year old Brandy Blake to the 160 acre game farm park in Auburn and then killing her and burying her body in a shallow grave court record show. She died from blunt force injuries. And apparently she had a, a key to a gate that went to that park. So when King County Sheriff's detective located Blake's body, they also found three human ribs about 30 feet from Blake's grave that have since been matched to Emilio Maturin, who was 36 when he was last seen alive in July of 2019, according to prosecutors. Bradley was charged with premeditated first degree murder in connection with Maturin's death on December 5th. Recent. Bradley was considered a person of interest in the March 2021 fatal shootings of Michael Goman, 59, and his son, Vance Lakey, 31, when he was also charged that May with second-degree arson for allegedly offering a man $1,000 to torch the father and son's 
Dodge Durango after it had been impounded, according to court records. Prosecutors amended the charges on Thursday, adding two counts of second-degree murder to the arson case. Goman and Lakey's bodies, as father and son, were found in the same general area, off an unmaintained road outside of Auburn, near the 36800 block of 56th Place South, in April of 2021, according to charging documents in the arson case. Bradley used the same scheme to kill all four victims. He told them that he needed help digging up a stash of stolen gold, lured them to a wooded area, killed them, and then stole their vehicle and whatever possessions were inside. Senior Deputy Prosecutor Thomas Oban II wrote in the Maturin charging documents. He was later seen driving the victims' vehicles in the days after they went missing, Oban wrote. Goman had received a large inheritance just before he and his son were killed, and Blake had won $20,000 at a casino and was known to carry large amounts of drugs and cash before her death, and Maturin always took his cash and drugs with him when he left the house, according to charging documents in the murder and arson cases. Bradley is now being held without bail in the King County Jail. No bail. Defense attorney Peter Geisness, who court records show is representing Bradley in all four murder cases, did not immediately return a phone call Friday seeking comment. Maturin's girlfriend reported him missing to Auburn police on August 2nd of 2019, two weeks after he disappeared. She later told sheriff's detectives that she overheard Bradley say he needed help digging up some buried gold in Auburn, and though Maturin was initially skeptical, he left their Kent townhouse with Bradley and never returned, charging papers say. They left in a white BMW that Maturin had recently purchased, and Maturin took a pound of heroin, some meth, and $15,000 in cash with him, according to the charges. The girlfriend tracked Maturin's cell phone to a game farm park and drove there to look for him, but got scared and left, the charges say. Less than 24 hours after Maturin and Bradley left together, Auburn police located an unregistered BMW parked in the 300 block of Stuck River Drive early on July 19th of 2019 and waited for the driver to return. Officers attempted to stop the BMW, but it took off and Bradley was arrested after a car and foot chase for eluding police. All right, the location where the BMW was parked is adjacent to a large field near where the rib bones were found in May of 2021 a detective wrote in charging papers. Detectives obtained a DNA sample from Maturin's mother, which was compared to male DNA from the rib. So that takes time sometimes, you know, for family members to come forward and or for them to find family members and to get their DNA and then test it and all of that. They compared this to the DNA scientists at the State Patrol Crime Lab determined last year that the DNA evidence from the ribs is at least 922 million times more likely to have come from the woman's biological child compared to the unrelated individuals, or to unrelated individuals, say charges. The probability is that the two are related is at least 99.9999, many nines percent, according to the charges, all right? So, Marilee says, could you help me dig up some buried gold, like dig your grave for me? Yes, and someone earlier said... Um, the red flag would be, can you help me dig up some stolen gold? Of course, that would be a red flag, but we could still pick out lessons from here. Even if these people were like, okay, I'll, I'll help you dig up some stolen gold, you know what I mean? If that feels morally wrong to you, right, just remember, one can still learn from this. These are still victims of an alleged serial killer. No one has any right to take anyone's life, no matter what they're up to, and also... We can learn from it. If somebody offers you something shiny, <laughs> like, why don't you come along with me? We'll meet up over there or I'll drive with you and let's, I don't know, get some Bitcoin or <laughs> I don't know. Don't know what people are looking for these days, but they might tap into your, your desires, your needs and say, just come with me. We'll meet up there. It's totally normal, right? And then the next minute, if you're, whew, maybe your gut instinct is like, I don't know, man, I don't trust this. Trust your gut, okay? Yeah, <laughs> Heidi's like gold bars, though. <laughs> I just imagine, like, I put on my thumbnail, like a chest, a treasure chest of gold coins. <laughs> I don't think that's what it was. And there was no gold there anyway. It was just something that he used to lure his victims there. So if we look at this one, this is actually an earlier article. 
This was published on June 3rd of 2021, but it gives a little bit more information. So now we go actually to another layer of the story, which already I've included lots of my presentation. This is really just to, to uh, remind you of all the things. In psychology, they say people only hear you the seventh time that you say something. So sometimes when I do layers of cases, you might find yourself remembering lots of information because I tend to say things a few times because I know this little fact. <laughs> you know, it helps to just be like, okay, wait, wait. First, an overview. Then layer one. Then we go a little bit deeper. It's like an onion, right? We're peeling the layers and we're trying to get to the bottom of the story. And today we are only starting the conversation because I can't wait to get the charging documents. I'd love to see if we could get the police um, interviews the video from the Walgreens, like all sorts of things might still come out. Some things might not be released before the trial, but you know, I'm going to be trying. Okay. So, oh, there we go. Pinche, Becky, Zero F's given says, stranger danger gold is the adult equivalent to candy. Yes. Which actually sums up what that grizzly patron was saying, which is what I was saying in my episode yesterday about that serial predator. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. That also applies in this case. Like, ooh, <laughs> we need to dig up some gold. Yeah, probably not. It seems way too good to be true. I mean, the one lady just won money at a casino. You know, she's at the top of her game. The other guy is like, woo, inheritance, new car. The other guy is like, brand new BMW. These people are feeling lucky. And now it's like, we're going to dig up some gold? Yeah, it seems way too good to be true. Mm -mm, don't trust it. Okay. So a 30, this was now two years ago when this was published. So now he's 40 years old, the alleged serial killer, right? So then he was 38. A man was charged last week with premeditated first degree murder accused of luring a woman to an Auburn park in early May, purportedly to dig up a stash of stolen gold and then killing her and burying her body in a shallow grave, according to King County prosecutors. Richard Walter Bradley, whose last known address is in Kent, was arrested May 21st of 2021 in Renton. Prosecutors have also tied him to two other recent homicide victims, charging him with second-degree arson in a case where he allegedly offered to pay a man $1,000 to torch an impounded Dodge Durango that belonged to two men who'd been shot to death, court and jail record show. So they were aware that he was linked to those two, to those victims, but they could only charge him with arson at the time. Now, after more investigating, more murder charges, okay? So, they say the following. Let's go on. Bradley also has uh, pending criminal cases from 2018, 2019, 2020. He's got a long rap sheet, okay? In addition to the recently filed murder and arson charges, he also faces two counts of first-degree unlawful possession of a firearm. He's being held at the Maleng Regional Justice Center in lieu of just over $3.1 million bail. Now he's obviously at the King County Jail. He has previously been convicted of vehicular assault, a second degree, and second degree robbery and was convicted in federal court for possessing an unregistered firearm. See, now, if you look at that, um, his previous charges, maybe he was tired of getting caught for robbery. We've seen this before when people escalate in their behavior and maybe he thought, I I'm going to make sure that whoever I rob next, I will silence them. I make them disappear. I think that's what he was thinking, right? Um, thank you so much, Rachel. And so... They say Bradley also has all these pending criminal cases that we just went over. He was on a $3.1 million bail. Now he's on no bail. Okay. Bradley is to be arraigned on the murder. He was already an arson and gun charges on June 7th of 2021. Now he's just going to, he's just been in court again, December 14th. He was in court again with all these new charges and he pled uh, or pleaded not guilty, which is standard, of course. Um, the King County Sheriff's Office. Uh, okay, Major Crimes Unit is still investigating the March 16 deaths of Michael Goman and his son, Vance Lecky. Sergeant uh, Tim Mayer, a sheriff's spoke, spokesperson, said Wednesday, Goman died from a gunshot wound to the head and Lecky died from multiple gunshot wounds to the head. Both their deaths were ruled homicides, according to the King County Medical Examiner's Office. Goman's body was discovered April 21st and Lecky is a week later in the same general area of an unmaintained county road outside of Auburn, Washington, near the 36800 block of 56th Place South. If anyone knows this area, please can you send me some information on it? Because is, is there like a homeless encampment nearby this park or what? Because I'm gathering that from what I'm reading, you know? So I don't know. I don't know anything about this area. But if you know anything, is it a little bit of a dangerous area or not? Or 
you know, how could he maybe go unnoticed or not? I think he went there at night, who knows? Okay, so they say the woman Bradley is accused of killing was identified by the medical examiner as 44-year-old Brandy Blake, who died May 5th from multiple blunt force injuries. Shame. Her death was also ruled a homicide. Blake's family reported her missing to Federal Way Police after she stopped answering her phone and responding to social media messages. Blake's body was found May 26th. King County Senior Deputy Prosecutor uh, Lakeisha Washington I say that right? Noted in charging documents in the murder case that items found near Blake's body were similar to items recovered near Lakey's remains, though she does not specify what those items were. But they could be that pickaxe and the key card and all that, right? Um, so Bradley and his wife were seen driving Goman and Lakey's Dodge Durango and Blake's Ford Mustang after all three were last seen alive. It's so odd that they would do that, right? <laughs> like driving around, like, woohoo, like. Like a joyride for a little bit, and then they ditched the car. Okay. Goman and Lakey were living in a tent before Goman received a large inheritance and purchased the three the Durango for $3,500 cash. And they say, that's what the arson charges say. The two men then lived in the SUV. After the men's bodies were found, sheriff's detectives interviewed one of Bradley's associates, who told them, that would be the alleged serial killer's associates, who told them that Durango was at a tow yard in Auburn. The man said that Bradley offered to pay him to set fire to the vehicle and told him to make sure the front seats were destroyed in the fire, say the charges. Bradley's wife gave the man a can of gas, but after cutting the fence surrounding the yard, the man told detectives he decided not to go through with the arson, the charges say. You see, that man trusted his gut. He's like, I don't know if I should torch this vehicle. I'm not going to. So, yes. Okay. Uh, Rachel says, yes, so many tent cities in Washington. Okay. After Bradley and his wife were arrested in a recreational vehicle in Renton, a rifle, a shotgun, and a handgun were found by sheriff's detectives inside the RV. Of course, that will also be part of the investigation. It must have been for the last two and a half years to match that to, you know, what was found with the victims. And so... Um, they say, according to charging papers in the arson case, the 40 caliber handgun found in the RV had belonged to Blake. That was victim number four. The 40 caliber handgun belonged to her, say the charges in the murder case. Also found in the vehicle was Blake's, that's her, victim number four's backpack, which contained more than three pounds of meth, a pound of heroin, and 1,000 Percocet pills, according to the charges. During the investigation, sheriff's detectives learned Blake dealt drugs, had recently won $20,000 at a casino, and was known to carry large amounts of cash, say the charges. They also learned that she had a key to a gate at Game Farm Park in Auburn, 168, oh, sorry, 160 acre park and wilderness area located about a three minute drive from a Walgreens store. Three minutes? Damn. So after they were seen on the Walgreens video at around 9 p.m. on May 5th of 2021, yeah, with three minutes, within three minutes, they're at this place. Um, so where Blake, accompanied by Bradley, was last seen on video just before 9 p.m. May 5th. Two hours later, Bradley was seen on video returning alone to a Federal Way hotel where Blake had, oh, where Blake had rented a room and he was wearing the same clothing as seen in the Walgreens video, according to the charges. So she had rented a room. They had met up. They were going to go and dig up this stolen gold and then probably return back and then, I don't know, they each take their cut according to what she believed was going to happen. That's not what happened. So he actually returned back there to that hotel where she had rented a room, wearing the same clothing as seen in the Walgreens video, according to the charges. Sheriff's detectives later recovered, which is amazing that they were able to later recover his t-shirt, shorts and shoes and all appeared to have blood on them. A friend of Blake's told investigators that Blake had confided in him that Bradley had told her that he buried a stash of gold taken in a robbery and had asked for Blake's help in selling it, according to the charges. Blake's Mustang was found abandoned on May 13th in Tacoma, and the charges note that the car's license plates had been removed, and it appeared the exterior had been wiped down with cleaner. So that to them was a red flag, and they started investigating. On May 26th, sheriff's officials searched the Game Farm Park's wilderness area with specially trained canines. Shout out to the canines. I love the canines. 
So a man who lives at the park told a detective that on a night, weeks earlier, he heard someone yelling for help and found a man who matched Bradley's description carrying a folding shovel and a backpack, say the charges. The witness said the man had become lost in the dark and he helped him find his way back to the road where a Mustang was parked. Three days later, the man returned to the park and gave the witness a large bag of crystal meth as thanks for his help. <laughs> okay, gifting. He's like, here you go. <laughs> a gift from me to you. Okay. <laughs> the witness directed detectives to an area south of the White River, where he, so this man did the right thing too. There's a lot of people in this case that did the right thing. This man was like, okay, I'm going to tell you where. Like, this is where this man was with his backpack and folding shovel. This man directed detectives there where he had found the man in the dark and the search was concentrated there. About 90 minutes later, a canine found Blake's body face down in a shallow, poorly covered grave, according to the charges. Nearby, uh, the charges said detectives found a key card to the Federal Way Hotel, a pickaxe and shovel next to a second hole about 20 yards from the grave. Based on the facts and circumstances of the case, I believe that Richard Bradley lured Brandy Blake to the Game Farm Park wilderness area with the story of gold that he had buried there with intent to kill her and take her property, including her narcotics, cash, firearm, and vehicle. So he's like a serial thief who then became a serial killer, allegedly. That's what it seems like, right? What do you think? Oh, what a... What a story, right? When I saw this, I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> he did what now? And then who? And the only um, video that I can find on it so far is this little one. It's just, and this is from two years ago. So they're going to talk about the three, two arson charges and the one murder charge. Okay, so let's just look at this because I think it's in this video. Yeah, that they show a bit of the area. So let's just quickly look at this. One man faces arson and murder charges after three bodies were found in two separate scenes in Auburn. The murder charge is in connection to the death of Brandy Blake. Her body was found at a wilderness park in Auburn last week. Court documents allege Blake was seen with Richard Bradley at a convenience store back in May. Then a witness saw Bradley at the park with a shovel in what looked like Brandy's car. The arson charge is connected to the deaths of Michael Goman and his son, uh, Vance Lakey. They were found murdered along a rural road in Auburn back in April. No charges have been filed for their deaths yet. Bradley is due in court on Monday. And that's it. No, no, that's all that I've seen so far on the case. So I'm hoping we get more information, you know, on the case as it goes on. And I'm, I wouldn't doubt that there's going to be more victims, especially if there is like um, lots of, t if there's lots of tents and it's a homeless encampment or something i think that this guy would victimize a lot more of them right sammy's mom said this is my brother's area and he's a police detective for tacoma pd and says he's not uh, allowed to talk too much about this very interesting well if he wants to talk even a little bit about it you know he can email me right <laughs> grizzly true crime at gmail.com i keep all my sources anonymous okay i'm very protective of my grizzlies. So if anyone emails me with information, please just know I'm going to be keeping you anonymous. Um, let's quickly go into this area again. Let's just look at this one. Let's do some map time. back okay so i'm just gonna zoom in a little bit for you <laughs> I see someone just rolling where did this happen now you know washington washington state west side of america i've got to say that for us foreigners you know because like washington state washington dc different different <laughs> okay so this happened in the auburn area of washington state all the way on the west side of the usa here's T tacoma washington where is Seattle, you guys? There is Seattle. Okay, Seattle, Washington. When I think of Tacoma and Seattle and all these areas, I think of Ted Bundy. So 
there's another serial killer, allegedly, an alleged serial killer in this area. Different modus operandi, right? And so, um, this, I just put Tacoma in here because that's where he ditched victim number four, Brandy Blake's car. And he is from this, uh, they, they said the Kent area, but they also said Renton. Where's Renton? Renton, Washington, let's see. Oh, even further north, okay. So he said, they said he's from the Kent area, but he was arrested in a recreational home in Renton, where he was living with his wife. And she was also arrested, and she was charged with the arson charge as well, from what I'm understanding. Oh, wow, really? Oh, my word. C-U-B says pineapple juice is the best natural cough suppressant. <gasps> I'm going to so get that. I was craving pineapple last week when I had flu. Yes, indeed. I've still got the cough going. Yes, it's very annoying, and it takes my voice away <laughs> every now and then. So Renton is where they were arrested, and he's from this Kent area. So let's just take that out for a moment. And the park area where they say this happened was, this is the address they gave, the 36856th place south. So it's in this sort of area, which I think there's like a park here. Well, it's obviously you could see it's a wooded area as well, right? Let me just adjust the colors a little bit. It's looking a little dull for you guys. Wait. Ah, <laughs> now we're boosting color. So you'll be like, color, grizzly, color boost, <laughs> right? So around this area, and I couldn't find the exact address of that game farm park. That I wasn't sure exactly how close that was. But this, the, I just wanted to show you just generally where the area is. Uh, one car was ditched there. The other was here by this stuck river drive. So yeah, he didn't operate in the biggest area ever. And now he's been behind bars since uh, May, what was it, May 21st of 2021. And whoa, he's just uh, been charged with three additional murder charges. So now he's facing four first degree murder charges for all four victims that they know of so far, as well as arson and robbery and all kinds of other things, right? Patricia Burns says the victimology in this case is so difficult to suss out, right? <laughs> but I would say we can, I always like to learn lessons from cases, as you guys know. So there's many. Trust your gut. If anything seems too good to be true, it probably is. Um, what else can we learn from this? If you win the lottery or you just got an inheritance or whatever, don't, don't flash that around. Keep it on the down low. Only maybe with your closest family, maybe just family. <laughs> and even then, <laughs> it's still dangerous, right? Because you don't know. Like this guy, obviously heard about it because in all four victims cases they just got either an inheritance or won the lottery or you know got money somehow and in like a, an influx of money suddenly and then there he was being like let's go dig up some gold and then took their money their cars their possessions their firearms their drugs everything like that okay nice i'm so gonna do this you guys <laughs> i'm gonna get pineapple juice tomorrow okay now, Little Nuggle says, I'm curious as to why one of the victims also, a drug dealer, had a key to the park. Was it a park managed by the local parks department? I'm also curious about that. I'm like, why did she have a key to it? But we don't know if she maybe worked there. She could have worked there or something. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. There's so many questions still. I just wanted to bring this. It's kind of breaking news right now because this only just surfaced in the last, you know, 16 hours or so that I can see. Um, I'd been reading, you know, you guys, <laughs> oh my word. I read so many cases this yeah, there's so many crazy cases out there. And I'm always reading true crime stuff in my in my spare time. Not that I have much spare time. I'm always researching for you to bring you something. And so I read a lot of cases today. And this was one of them that I'm like, what? And then I started reading more and more about it. Okay, there we go. Thank you so much. Uh, Queeky? 30, 30, R. Okay, wait, let's, let's type that in. 30, 30, R. Street, Auburn, Washington. Okay. Let's see how close those two are. One more round of map time. Oh, very close. Oh, wow. Thank you for that. So this is where the game park area was. And this is where the other area is. I think the father and son's bodies were found around here. And then in this park area 
would be Randy Blake, victim number four's body, and the ribs of victim number one. Which I do wonder then, how did the guy get in there? Because victim number one was victim number one. Number four was later, she had the key to the gate. But maybe he got in there, maybe Emilia also had a key to there. How do we know? Sure, that's quite hectic. Anyway, my good luck to me getting any sleep because my brain will be restless now with all the questions that I have in this case. But I did want to bring it to you, start the conversation. Let's see if we learn anything or see anything. I haven't seen any of his court appearances. I don't see any footage of it. I don't see any videos on this case or anything. So really today, I just wanted to bring it to you, tell you about it. You're aware of it now. There's four victims that we know of so far. If I get those, um, the probable cause affidavit, and if we learn new information from there, of course, we'll meet again. I'll share it with you. Okay. So Daphne Rain says, thank you so much, G. I've been watching you forever, and it's so interesting to learn about local cases. Yeah, and Carrie says, I'd be interested to know about his employment history to find out where he was before these murders and research missing persons while he was in those areas. Me too. Like, what is his employment history? Is it, was he always like a, a drug dealer or, you know what I mean? Like, it seems like that could be likely. I'm not sure what his work ethic is, you know, like out in the real world. I'm not sure. It sounds like a lot of robbery and things like that. And we only know from cases from 2018 his crimes, but I think his rap sheet would go quite way back. And I'm going to be digging into that a little more. If I find anything interesting, I'm going to bring it to you. Okay. So Chrissy notices this is the first I've even heard about this case. Yeah. I think it's the first that any of us have heard about this case. It just surfaced today. Um, obviously there was that one video from two years ago, but it was like, you know, I mean, how many people looked at that video? 3.1 K views, 3,100 people viewed it and knew about it. And since then it went quiet until now. Because he went from an alleged killer and arsonist and robber and all that to, oh boy, lots of murder charges. Oh dear, serial killer. Sure. Okay. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for being here. It's always nice to see you. I always get so excited when I've got something to bring you because I'm so happy <laughs> to see you guys. I love spending my time with you and discussing all these cases with you. And we all learn together. Thank you for all your emails and all your messages that you're sending me on Patreon. I really, really appreciate it. If you haven't checked out Patreon yet, go check it out. Um, there's lots of other perks on there that you don't get anywhere else. And you can actually send me direct messages there. And we have a community chat as well. So thank you for all the messages you sent there. It's very helpful. Um, if you have any information in this case, if you want to share about the area, or if you want to, I don't know, if you know anything, grizzlytruecrime at gmail.com, I will keep my sources anonymous. Thank you so much. And let's quickly, let's just quickly, hold on one second. I want to see something. Just quickly. Wait, is Joe Jackalone going to do something? Is he live? <laughs> Not today. Anyway, go and um, subscribe to Joe Jackalone's channel, okay? I'm going to put it in the chat here. Go and subscribe. And you could say you're a grizzly. <laughs> he already knows when we're there. There's bears everywhere. We raided his chat last night after the members only stream. And yes, if you're a member and you didn't check out yesterday's stream, do check it out. It's also on Patreon if you want to see it there. Okay, everyone, I'm going to rest my voice and get some pineapple juice tomorrow. And I will see you again very, very soon. Stay safe, okay? Trust your gut. Okay, bye.